Hello, Michael Stackpole, and thank you very much for joining us today. We are really happy to have the opportunity to talk to you. You have designed role-play games, computer video games, and you also found the time to write many novels. How was that? Well, I, I get bored pretty easily, so I, I like doing a lot of different <laughs> projects. Um, you know, game design is where I got my start, and so I just find that really, really exciting. And, and being a uh, being a gamer, um, you know, that just I find it really fun creatively watching how other people create worlds and creating worlds myself. And then when you look at at novels. This gives you a chance to go ahead and play in those worlds and and see all the different things that go on. Uh, so it's it's for me writing and designing is just being able to engage my imagination and and roll forward. And I just absolutely love it. Uh, wh what can you tell us about how did you end up writing this novel? Well, I, I got an uh, uh, an invite uh, from Blizzard to talk about possibly doing an novel for them. I had not played World of Warcraft um, before. I knew of it, and I uh, had lots of friends who played it and encouraged me to play, and I basically knew that if I started playing, I would stop working because I would be logging lots of hours on the game. <laughs> um, and uh, and I, I had a friend that I played, uh, played soccer with, and about 18 months before uh, Blizzard got in touch, he said, really, you should talk to those guys because, you know, the, you do a great uh, World of Warcraft novel. And I just had a lot of other projects going on, so I, I never did anything. And then um, I got uh, an invitation through uh, through Cryptozoic, got some uh, uh, introductions exchanged, and uh, started playing the game, started reading up on all the material, just found it an absolutely fascinating world. And, you know, I, I know Christy Golden and I know Richard Knack, so that's, uh, uh, you know, those were uh, guys that I knew and respected their work. So when I got to see their work... Uh, and then got to explore the world, and boy, did I log a lot of hours. Um, you know, getting the chance to actually write a novel there was just fantastic. Which class did you play? <laughs> you know, I pretty much played everything <laughs> because it was because it was because it it literally was research, um, and because I knew that I'd be writing about Vulgen, um, uh -huh. You know, I, I started playing a troll. I um, also because I knew that I wanted to be able to solo a lot of stuff. Uh, I ended up playing a, a human hunter um, who is very much like the character Tarathan. You know, I mean, that's certainly my experience playing that character certainly informed what uh, what I was able to write uh, about uh, Tarathan. But I just I just explored the, the game all over the place just to try a whole bunch of different things just to really get that experience because I found that um, in writing fiction set in game worlds, and I've done that with Battletech and a lot of other things, that if you actually understand the experience that the players have, and you can put a little bit of that into the fiction, that goes a long way to making people really, really happy, and and really makes the story a lot more convincing for them and a lot more real, and that's what I want. I want them to, you know, to, to just sink straight into the story and not go not have any points where they think, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk a bit about the book, Bulging okay. Shadow of the Horde. Uh, the beginning chapter, the, the beginning of the first chapter talks about the origins of the trolls. Uh, will we know more about them? I think you'll, you'll end up knowing more about them and knowing more about their relationship with uh, the Loa and especially... What's interesting about this book is that it is a transitional book. So you're watching Vol'jin moving through his life and really figuring out where he wants to go. Uh, so this is, as a result, you end up having a perspective on the history, but also looking at it as, as a launching pad for where uh, Vol'jin thinks that he wants to go in the future. And that, for me, that was what really excited me about this particular story, is that I got to work with the foundational history and the culture and the background of the trolls, but also, you know, be able to move things forward exactly the way that things would move forward in life. Uh, because the internal fight between Garros and Bulging, 
uh, will change the leadership of the Horde? Was it difficult for you to write about this big change in the history of World of Warcraft? It, it really wasn't difficult for me to do it. Um, the reason being is that I've worked with a lot of different properties, and especially, especially back when I was writing Battletech novels, um, I was the guy that would do the big historical changes. So I sort of had a, a sense of how you want to approach that. And then everybody at Blizzard, and this really impressed me about Blizzard, is they have got such a good sense of the world and continuity and knowing what they want that, you know, I had all the direction that I needed. And, and yet they gave me creative freedom to, you know, push things in, in certain other directions that made the story a lot more satisfying. So it was, a, it was a great experience. Uh, we have real master Chen saving Bolgin, okay? Also, we have Chen on the cover, right. and Horde will need a new world chef. Will Chen lose his neutrality? What do you think? I, I, I that that is a question that will have to be answered by other people. Um, <laughs> that's 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 a decision that gets made above my pay grade. Um, but I think what's what's I think what's very cool about this universe is that. Those are the sorts of questions that that can be answered. Um, and I think you know, one of the fun things about writing the character Chen is that um, you know he has been sort of a happy-go-lucky character and and a, a, a frighteningly great friend uh, to Vol'jin. And in this story, you know, he has to he does have to make some decisions about where he wants to go forward too. So, I mean, the, the book looks like it is, you know, entirely Vol'jin all the time and these other characters sitting around. But their stories and what they have to do parallel some of the same decisions that Vol'jin is making, uh, which, again, for me, made it a really dynamic story. What did you enjoy the most while writing the book? Do you have something special? You know, the, the, the thing that I really, really enjoyed about writing the book was being able to take, uh, Vol'jin and introducing him to the Pandaren culture and watching someone from the outside begin to absorb that and watching all of these characters getting an understanding of each other. That for me was a, was a just great fun because it allows the characters to be mature and to be real. Unlike, you know, in a lot of, a lot of fantasy fiction, um, writers tend to shy away from those hard decisions and some of the philosophical thoughts. But this book really allowed me to play with a lot of that. And I, and I enjoyed that a great deal. Okay. Uh, when you think about the books you wrote based on existing worlds like Star Wars or Battletech, did the fact that World of Warcraft is a game, but at the same time an evolving world, change the way you, appro you approach the book? Well, every different uh, property holder has a slightly different process in what they want uh, to be able to do. So first off, you know, I had to get used to the way Blizzard does stuff, which was different from the way Lucasfilm did or the way that, that Fast and WizKids did with, um, with Battletech. But that said, um, what was really cool is that Blizzard was very, very receptive to letting me add stuff to the story that they wanted to tell. They knew in general, and when we first started talking, um, they knew what they wanted Vol'jin to go through and where they wanted Vol'jin to end up. But I got to figure out exactly how he was going to get there. And we went through, you know, lots of iterations. You know, I got to add in the whole Tarathan storyline, which I thought worked as a, as a really nice balance. Got to expand uh, Chen's role a lot more. And so I, I really love working with property holders who they are creative and they understand the creative process and they're willing to allow people to go forward. The fact that Missa Pandaria was not out yet and available yet at the time that I started did mean that there was a process of evolution, that as something got changed in the game, I would get notes and that would necessarily force me to make a change in the novel. But again, because the game is so big and because players experience it through their characters, um, the novel doesn't have to map over a hundred percent exactly because everyone's got their own point of view. And that also I think makes the makes the world really, really dynamic and, and makes it a lot of fun. 
And what do you think about this type of model, of publishing model? I mean, uh, you have a book you can read, and at the same time you can go and play, use what you read. What do you think about that? I think it's absolutely great. I mean, I, I really love the fact that when you're playing, uh, when you're playing the game, you're there. All of your role playing is going on inside your own head, or maybe role playing with some of the other players that you meet in the game. Um, but you never really get to see inside some of the major characters' heads. And yet with the novel, you get to fill in what they're feeling and what they're talking about. And one thing that I will say for, for Blizzard that was very, very cool is that they would remind me again and again, as I made references to certain events, make sure that, that when I reference the characters, that we always allow that there were player characters who were there too. So Vol'jin might remember some specific friends, but also would remember other people who were there. So anyone who had worked through those scenarios in the game and is now reading the book, they're going, oh, yeah, that's me. You know, I'm the guy he remembers there. And I think that that just makes it a lot more fun for, for readers. You know, you get to own a little bit more of the world. Uh, do you have any projects, a, any new projects to share with us? Maybe a new World of Warcraft novel soon? Well, I think they're waiting to make any decisions on that to see how this book does, uh, and that is cool. I would love to go back uh, to the World of Warcraft uh, 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 world, and, and uh, you know, if they want me to push Vol'jin a little bit more forward or play with other characters, uh, <laughs> definitely, you know, sign me up. Um, the only other thing I've got going right now, uh, aside from some uh, some books of my own that I'm doing, is uh, I just signed a deal to do uh, a novel set in the Pathfinder role-playing game system. Uh-huh. Uh, just to finish, uh, where we can fin find you online? You, my uh, my website is stormwolf.com, or you can probably the more easy thing is to follow me on Twitter at Mike Stackpole. Okay, Michael, thank you very much for spending this time with us. I, no, I again, thank you very much for your time. This was this was a lot of fun. Okay, thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.